Hi there guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I have a different setting because I am at um, a different place. I have a machine here which I'm going to be working on free motion quilting without a quilting foot. So I want to show you how I get set up with this machine. So it's a straight line machine, sewing machine. It's not meant for quilting. It's for straight line and it is an industrial machine. It's very heavy, it has a big engine right below and it is not meant to be for free machine quilting. I don't see a lot of people using it for free machine quilting. I did try to find a couple of foot that try that can fit in here, which is the free motion quilting foot, but I couldn't find yet one to actually work with it. So what I'm going to do is actually quilt this without the quilting foot. Now I wouldn't recommend this for beginners because when you don't have a foot here, your hand can actually be underneath the needle and it can catch on you, which is going to be very, very dangerous. So what I would recommend is actually to really be careful if you don't have any choices and this is the only choice that you can to start quilting, um, you do have to be careful with that in mind. Now it is going to be a little bit difficult because without the foot there are a couple things that is going to be challenging. So what I want to do here in this video is bring you along on how I get things set up so that you can try and do the same. There's going to be a lot of different troubleshooting from one machine to another. So basically we are going to take you through on what I do every time I got a new machine and how I set it up for free machine quilting. So let's get started. Um, I'm using Juke 5500. If you are in the Asian country or in Malaysia, I think this is a very common machine that you may have. And I'm just showing here that it is possible to do some quilting with the machine. And in fact, it's very easy as the throat area is very large and it's a cheaper machine as compared to the modern ones. Alright, let's get So to get started, I am putting this Supreme slider. It does really help. Um, without it, I think it's really hard to move your quilt. It just creates a smooth surface. Beside that, this machine, I don't know how to get the feed dog, feed dog down. So this kind of hide, hide the feed dog and you can move your quilt really easily. I am now going to take off the foot of this machine because we're not going to be using this foot. So this is actually just the normal foot that um, does straight stitching. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to put back the screw in its place so just I don't lose it um, and then keep the foot at a safe place so that when I'm going to use it later, I have it in place. And now I am also going to use this thread later i'm not going to change my thread right now i'm using the one that's already in here i'm going to test it out if it's um capable to do some free motion quilting because i think a good thread really matters and since this one um i couldn't get the feed dog down it's good to actually have this teflon sheet covering the areas for the feed dog and also you don't need to do any setup for the stitches i just let it be at whatever stitches um, numbers at is now just another remark you also want to change the needle i am not going to change it now but what you want to find is a needle that has a large eye so the reason being is that it's going to be a lot of movement when we do free motion quilting so we don't want to allow the thread to kind of like have some restriction so the larger eye needle will have help if i'm using a domestic machine i'm using the supreme uh, if this super thread top stitch machine needle it has a large eye you can see that very clearly in there it has a really large eye and that really helps in aid giving aids to that thread so that you just have a lot more room to kind of move while we do the free motion quilting now if you're using the machine make sure that you get the right needle because it doesn't use the same needle as the domestic machine i've already prepared my silk sandwich so my quilt sandwich consists of the backing the fabric the middle part which is the batting and also the front top and I just have this a bit larger than the top um, and bottom but it doesn't matter because it's just a practice piece so let's get started to get started you want to just bring the needle down so make sure that the foot is also down and bring the needle down to the position using your hand wheel so hand crank and bringing it down and then holding on to this thread so you see when you pick it up with your hand crank you can see that the 
whole quilt kind of like lift up as well and that is the reason why it's very challenging to do this without the quilting foot so the presser foot or the quilting foot actually keeps the the whole thing down right but now it doesn't you don't have that so what we have to do is just hold on with your hand and just keep trying to keep the whole sandwich down I am taking out the bobbin thread up and then I am going to start stitching so once the bobbin thread hand come out it should be okay for you to start stitching um, but sometimes you will find that you will miss some stitches so we want to go ahead and just test this out so what I'm going to do now I am going to try a couple of stitches just be aware of your hand again it's very dangerous your hand can go under the needle so yep see so once I got close to the needle I will move my hand away from that just to make sure that my hand is not in the way of the needle because that's going to be again really dangerous I'm just going to keep reminding you this this is um, something that you can do but you do have to be aware of the dangers yeah so as you can see now I've got a straight line going I'm just doing straight line because it's the easiest for me to kind of see the um, where I'm I can adjust the tension or any issues so you can see now we can have a loss missing stitches we have this area that is not even stitched at all and then this could be due to the needle itself because it's just small and when we have three layers and the quilt itself is moving up and down it just messed a little bit of the pathway for the thread and that's why it misses a lot of stitches so what we can do now at this point is actually to change the needle so we do change one thing at a time just so we know what's what can we troubleshoot and what's actually happening so this is always the normal thing that i do every time i troubleshoot with a new machine so i'm taking off the needle and changing to the bigger size needle so the bigger size needle with a larger eye should help to overcome this issue so just before we start i'm taking up the bottom thread up and then again just with any start you want to start by picking up the bottom thread up on top of the quilt top so I would do this with a with a hand crank. Just pick it up. Yeah. So you got that thread up and hold on to both of the thread while you stitch down. So you want to do this a couple of times if it's not picking up you probably have to try and adjust your needle position sometimes the needle position is very very sensitive even a slight change or slight turn could cause the pathway to mess up so i'm going to try and do the little bit more stitches you can see this form is stitches now it's not missing any stitches but it's very very tight so now is the time for me to adjust the tension so i want to show you how it looks like it looks like it's picking up all the stitches now it's just a little bit bent like on the top it's like very very tight so what i'm gonna do is loosen up the top thread by loosening up the tension button so i'm going to loosen it up i have this light here to help me guide to show you because it's very dark here okay so now we have another set of trial so we'll, we'll do this a couple of times this is just something that we need to do every time we start with a new machine so especially with no foot it'll be a lot of learning and troubleshooting before you get it right so i'm trying it again you do notice that i am going to try a couple of different straight stitches first because that's the easiest for me to kind of see how the stitches are going so i can see that it's getting better i can see the stitches are forming nicely on top now but i'm just trying to get that sweet spot so i'm trying again and see adjusting the tension as i go and then try again and changing direction may also change the tension and that is where you got to kind of understand where your machine is going to be better at um, the most comfortable place for it to kind of like do a good stitches because when free motion quilting the tension is very sensitive sometimes the way it wraps the needle it can change the tension of the thread and hence this is what happens so now you can see that the thread is 
breaking. So at the point of breaking, this is the time when I decide to actually change the thread because I know that this thread is not meant for quilting. It just doesn't have that um, quality to kind of go through a lot of stresses up and down and then with a different kind of tension as we move around with our free motion quilting. So at this stage, I am going to just snap that off and change into a better thread. So I'm using the Aurifil thread right here. Um, I am just re-threading it again. Um, you can just pull it from the old thread, but I'm just threading it again because sometimes re-threading helps a lot. So it again, as I said, it's very sensitive. So you do need to thread your machine. Sometimes re-threading, just do the thread. So I am doing it um, a new setup. A new line now because I just want to make sure that this now with the new thread I am just doing a new set of um, testing a trial so again with this one because you've changed the needle we've changed the thread let's go again and if there is any tension issues we need to set up right now the tension issues will always need to kind of adjust because it's just something that just changes with time and also changes with the way we move our quilt in this case, I mean like without the quilting foot because it's just that there is no sense of um, control in terms of the quilt coming up and also the needle going up and down in that sense. There is nothing that is constant for the machine to kind of understand how it works. Right, so I'm just doing a couple of different stitches, adjusting the tension. The tension will take some time until you get to the sweet spot. I think I am just near there so I think that's really good stitches right there um, I'm going to start doing a different shape just to see whether that tension kind of remains and if it not if it is not then I'm changing it again so you will find your sweet spot just be patient and keep on trying at this stage so I think that's pretty good now, if you're a total beginner and you don't know what to practice, I teach you this in a free e-course that you can sign up for on my blog. I'll put a link down below. You can just sign up. I'll teach you how to get started. Okay, so now I'm ready to make a different shape. Just, I think that's a really good sweet spot right there. I find that um, the stitches are pretty quite consistent. Um, now, once you got to this stage, it's, it doesn't mean that you're free motion quilting is going to be perfect you still have to adjust things and you still need a lot of practices especially if you want to do a design that you have been wanting to do you do need to do a lot of practices and a lot of patience so let's try and do a stippling motif now you can see that the thread sometimes doesn't like to move in a certain direction because just the way um, the threading is I'll show you later how it looks like I'm trying to do a stipple motif right now. I'm just going to start doing some curved stitches. Now I can see that the tension is changing. So this is the time I'm going to adjust again the tension button. So I am going to do that until I get a good, good um, tension with this motif. I can see that the top one is very tight. I am going to change that to loosen up a little bit. So you may notice that sometimes your stitches is tighter in one side as opposed to the other. Now this is because your thread is going on through this way and this way. So you move this way, you may have less tension because it's flowing right on the side. But if you move this way, your tension of the thread is going to be different because it's going to have one more stress right here. 
so you will find that moving right to the left might have a difference in terms of the tension so you might want to think of a way how you can actually get that smooth out so it's not exactly free motion but you know if you want to move that way you may want to just change or just rotate your quilt instead So for example, I'm going this way, I want to just keep that moving so it's that way. Now you might come also at some issues like missing stitches. These are very normal. It will get better with time. But I would say if you're a total beginner, don't attempt to kind of do this you're going to give up unless if you have a really strong determination to get it right but what I'm just trying to tell you here is that see that's so much different from one to another you see, you see that something is wrong so yep so you're gonna finally have to think about sometimes it does mess up like that especially with new machine you just have to be patient enough to get things working in the right direction so i'm not sure what happened there probably my stresses and i just want to check my bobbin so you can also check your bobbin you can also check your bobbin sometimes re-threading the bobbin as well in place um it was out of the bobbin case just because it's not its normal way in how to do it so it's not as easy but once you got that set up it is possible in fact i quilted the whole quilt with this machine and i love the final look so just be aware of your hand don't ever get close to that while cooking it's just going to be so dangerous so i hope you do try it i hope um some of this tutorial might be helpful for you to get started and if you do try it just be careful with your hands um otherwise i'll put a link down below some of the foot that you can try with your machine Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I did have a couple of practice pieces here. If you have a practice piece, make sure you um, go to my blog post where I share with you what you can do with your practice pieces. You can turn them into something useful so that you can actually get them to work. Um, it does requires a lot of patience with a new machine, especially a machine that doesn't come with quilting abilities. You will have to kind of like try a lot of time and be patient. But if this is the only one, way for you to actually be um, quilting, I absolutely recommend that you go for it. Uh, it does expand your ability to do a lot more with your hobby and if you are able to quilt your own quilt in a way that you want to quilt it it's going to feel amazing i did a whole bed quilt using this very machine even though it breaks a couple of times i got it like uh, to a position where it doesn't break as much and i got the quilt finished in two days of course i have a lot of practice before so if you are practicing with this kind of machine I do um, just give you a heads up that you need to be careful with your hands and you need to be patient a lot and trying that a little bit by little bit so that you can adjust things so that it would work for according to you so with that thank you so much for watching if you like this video make sure you click the like button and subscribe I will see you in the next video bye bye